Larsenauts is the latest addition to the Quest's already ample first-person shooter market, looking to stake its claim in the virgin soil of the hero shooter niche. Impulse Gear, creators of the critically acclaimed PSVR title Farpoint, have turned their attentions away from story-driven single-player adventure games and towards the fast-paced adrenaline of the online shooter genre, and have garnered a lot of buzz along the way. Does this plucky, ragtag band of space rogues have what it takes to blast their way into your game rotation? Or will their heist run afoul and leave them down and out, drowning their sorrows in some futuristic cantina? Grab your guns and buckle your bandolier, because it's time to find out. Larsenauts is the quest's first foray into the hero shooter genre and is a welcome addition to the library if for that reason alone. This subgenre has become popular in recent years with the rise of flat games like Overwatch. Much like Population 1 has been called the Fortnite of VR, many will make the same comparison here with Overwatch. For the uninitiated, hero shooters favor a character class system, with each character coming equipped with unique weapons and abilities. Larsenauts offers eight unique characters or specialists to choose from. The characters all have abilities that are varied enough to give an entirely different spin on the gameplay. Larsenauts offers traditional character classes with a futuristic slant that makes the game sparkle while providing an eccentric and compelling cast of characters. Evander, for example, is an elite sniper whose high-powered rifle and cloaking ability make him deadly at long range while the vaguely creepy Chi is a masked medic who seems to take just a little too much pleasure in reviving his teammates. There are also some more unusual characters, such as the mighty Vod, an alien brawler who uses Dalsim-like extending arms to batter his opponents into submission. This eclectic menagerie of misfits is elegantly balanced, allowing for a tactical depth to the game that begins right from the moment you select your character. Unlike non-hero shooters, choosing your character is about what role you want to fill within your team, just as much as it is about which weapons you want to use. Specialists come equipped with their own unique weapons and possess several abilities that encourage a particular style of play. Broadly speaking, each specialist has deployable gear, which allows the player to drop an item into the world, and a quick ability, which is often based around movement. In addition, the ability to overcharge weapons provides a powerful variant accessible to either of the character's weapons, and personalized grenades that suit their specific playstyle. In addition to all this, each character has two power slates, allowing the player to add additional perks to enhance specific aspects of their playstyle. These could be as simple as a damage or ammo count modifier, or as pivotal as an extra use of a vital ability. The choices are wide-ranging and add a thoughtful, balanced amount of customization within each class. This is all really rather nice, and offers something that was sorely lacking on the quest until now. Finding the characters that you favor takes time, and getting good at them takes more still. And that's even before you start to tweak their loadout and power slates. A lot is going on in Larsenauts. But everything makes sense and contributes to the game's overall enjoyment without making it feel cluttered. Primarily multiplayer, with bots bolstering the roster when needed, Larsenauts is a 6v6 team-based shooter at its core. At launch, the fast-paced action takes place over four beautifully designed maps and features three game modes. Additionally, Impulse Gear have already shared a roadmap promising even more content before the end of the year. On release, the game modes on offer include classic FPS staples like Team Deathmatch and a Capture the Flag style mode called Refuel. Then there's the somewhat more innovative Drone Hack mode. In Drone Hack, players carry a ball shaped drone from one side of the map to the other to connect to an uplink before the drone explodes. The drone can be passed between players or thrown downfield to cover more ground and make it to the uplink all while your enemies attempt to shoot you and or steal the drone from you. It adds an original and often chaotic element into the mix, and it is a thrill to play. Larsenaut's pacing is deliberately frantic, with each game mode encouraging you to cover as much of the diverse map as you can.
This is helped along by movement powers that push you at breakneck speed, as well as handy grapple points, which allow you to traverse the vertical elements of the map swiftly and efficiently. At times, it can become almost overwhelming trying to balance all the elements of the gameplay. Maximizing the utility of your abilities and timing the usage of your character-specific grenades or your overcharge mode can be a lot to process, especially while trying to remain mindful of where your enemy is attacking from and how best to support your team. However, once you get the hang of it, Larsenauts provides the sort of delightful madness that can eat your hours away. All that said, Larsenauts is not perfect. In fact, a few critical design choices have been made which could sadly ruin the game for some and would have been fatal for a lesser game. To begin with, Impulse Gear have committed one of the cardinal sins in VR insofar as there are times where the player's in-game hands stop tracking to their physical ones and a canned animation takes over. This happens during reloading and sprinting, two actions that you will repeatedly perform as you play, so if this bothers you, it is really going to bother you. Additionally, your offhand is not used for two-handed aiming, but instead just steadies your weapon against recoil. This means that once your offhand engages with your primary weapon, it is no longer being tracked as long as the grip button is pressed. If this sounds like a deal breaker for you, I would recommend waiting to try Larsenauts until after the first few updates have gone live. Now, despite understanding that at this stage in VR development, having an animation take over your hands is borderline criminal, I got past it. In fact, it was relatively easy for me to ignore these issues because of how brilliant literally everything else in this game is. Now, that's an important point to note here, because my Solaris review pointed out similar issues and I scored that game poorly. The difference here is... Unlike Solaris, once you get the canned animations out of your mind and just play, Larsenauts offers a level of depth and polish that will see you joyfully rushing back into the fray time and time again. The good news is that during our recent dev talk with Impulse Gear, they confirmed that immersive sprint, two-handed aiming and manual reload are all on track to release shortly after launch. One can only hope that the lack of these features doesn't hurt the initial player base too badly. For this review, I played Larsenauts on the original Quest. I must commend the team at Impulse Gear for how much they managed to squeeze out of the older headset. For those of you with a Quest 2, however, Larsenauts provides better textures and increased levels of detail. So yes, it's prettier on your new gear. Lucky you. Whichever quest you're playing on, Larsenauts is a thoroughly good-looking game, with varied environments and excellent character design throughout. Despite the intense action, frame rates seldom drop and assets don't pop into existence as complex scenes render. It's bright, vibrant and smooth, and it's a testament to what a talented team can achieve on the quest. The levels are all thoughtfully designed in terms of both gameplay and graphical fidelity, with each level having differing zones and unique visual motifs. My own favorite level is definitely Hazard Pay, where the action takes place under an ominously purple clouded sky, lit up by an electrical storm and an impressively exploded planet in the skyline. Somehow, Larsenauts manages to do more with ambient backgrounds than many other games have, all while providing impressive gameplay action. The character design is also excellent, with each specialist looking unique, interesting, and appropriate for their role in the game. This really makes the process of trying them all and picking your favorites very satisfying. The UI is also elegantly designed to be clean, effective, and user-friendly. I did notice a slight graphical glitch on the character select screen, but that's a minor issue, and it did not lower my opinion of the production values. Overall, I would say that Larsenauts has achieved a visual standard that few other titles on the Quest have. The audio design in Larsenauts is equally top-notch. The voice acting is excellently performed and used to significant effect, treading that fine line between filling the void and becoming obtrusive, and it does so with finesse. In addition, 
each character has a distinct personality that is rendered admirably through their limited dialogue. It all meshes perfectly with the tone, pacing, and aesthetic of the game, and is an excellent example of the power of clever sound design. The music is pretty good as well, with lively hooks that will have you unconsciously nodding your head in between matches. It's juxtaposed to the background music with increasing intensity as matches wind towards their climax. It's catchy, distinctive, and most importantly, totally harmonious with everything else that the game has to offer. Spatially, Larsenort succeeds, but it doesn't excel. Compared to Population 1 and Crashland, Larsenort's doesn't stack up as the pinnacle of directional audio. Perhaps I had the music up too loud, but I found it difficult to pick up directional cues amid even mild action, most noticeably with approaching footfall. It would appear that all of our delightful space rogues, even the heavy metal ones, are remarkably light on their feet. Either that or they're wearing some very soft bunny slippers. The biggest question with an online multiplayer game tends to center around longevity. How long will the game be able to keep you coming back? And more importantly, how long will it be able to sustain its player base? Sadly, I dropped my crystal ball recently, so your guess is as good as mine. I will say this, I have already put as much time into Larsenauts as I have in Contractors, and I like Contractors well enough. However, I have little interest in going back into Contractors again, whereas I cannot wait to get back into Larsenauts. I played for a few hours just experimenting with all of the specialists, trying to decide who I wanted to master. I then spent another few hours focusing on two of them, only to change their loadouts and power slates and have them feel like entirely new characters. I have a ranked list of the specialists in the order that I want to practice playing them, and I expect to be playing Larsenauts long after learning to use all of them proficiently. If you find that the basic mechanics, diversity of customization, depth of tactical team play, and overall flow of the gameplay appeal to you, and if the game draws and maintains a decent player base, then you will probably find that there is more to keep you coming back here than in pretty much any other shooter on Quest. Larsenauts is an incredibly polished and well-delivered hero shooter that manages to offer something new and exhilarating within a fairly crowded market. At launch, Larsenauts is marred by some questionable design decisions that would have felled a lesser title. However, the game has made up for these shortfalls by focusing on the core elements of gameplay that make it so satisfying to play. Larsenauts excels thanks to its range of customizations that allow for varied playstyles and add magnificent depth to the outstanding team play. All in all, Larsenauts is a unique, downright engaging multiplayer shooter that is as addictive as it is fun. If you're looking for a new way to blast your friends or total strangers in VR, then I highly recommend taking this one for a spin. Personally, I give it a 9, but I realize that the canned animations, while they remain forced, will put some players off. So Impulse Gear, I'm docking you half a point for that. For everything else, all I can say is well done. 8.5. Brilliant. If you're enjoying the channel and would like to stay up to date with all the news, reviews, and interviews, hit the subscribe button now.